softball, soccer, baseball, or whatever the sport may be. The only reason that they were able to perform is because you took a little bit of yourself and you poured it into them. Very coach that guided these athletes. It was your intelligence, your creativity that gave them the ability to make this thing work. And so we take a moment today to say thank you. We want to honor you, oh God, for those of our loved ones who have gone on to be with you. Thank you for their memories. Thank you so much for the investments that we have still to enjoy to this day. Now, God, as we come into this place, we prepare to eat and we prepare to celebrate. And we ask, oh God, for your presence to be with us. May your kingdom come and may your will be done. And in addition, May JCC keep marching on. We pray this now in the name of Jesus. And everyone who agreed said, Amen. Amen. No, I didn't. I guess I will. Can we pray over this food? Yeah. Now y'all know I'm Baptist. We don't, we don't pray. No, I'm just playing. Let's, let's pray. God, we thank you for the food. That bless those that prepared it. Blessed it be for the my body in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Dinkins. At this time, I will bring Mr. Chevron Urson up, our food service director, and he will guide us in how to go and get our food. Come on up, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Today's menu is we will have blackened salmon, grilled, grilled shrimp, 
We also have a roast beef. Um, we have creamy spinach, asparagus. We have also have a sweet potato souffle. On your tables, you have your salads in front of you with ranch dressing and strawberry vinaigrette. Also, you have sweet tea. If I can start on this side with tables four, three, seven, and eight, you can proceed through the back door, work your way around, um, and go to your left to line number one. There's a sign out there which also give you direction if you get a little lost. We also have people out there. So again, tables four, three, seven, and eight, you can proceed to the back exit door. Please also, if you have your mask, please wear your mask going through the lines and still, we're still trying to practice social distance. As tables four, three, seven, and eight proceed, tables one, five, six, and nine, you may go out the middle doors to your right and there's a table number, number two. Again, tables one, five, six, and nine, you can also proceed through the middle doors. Once again, please practice social distance and wear your mask.
At this time, tables 11, 12, 16, and 22, you can proceed through the back exit door. The back door. The back door, please. The back door. Table 15, 19, 10, and 14 to proceed through the middle door. Table 10, 19, 15, and 14 through the middle door. And also table 20.
Casting tables 9, 13, 17, and 18 to proceed through the back door, please. Table 9, well, table 9, sorry. Table 13, 17, and 18, proceed through the back door, please.
We're going to let you all continue to enjoy your meal. But we're going to ask the um, Jarvis Christian College Male Ensemble to come forth and give us a selection.
At this time, our program will proceed as printed with the introduction of our speaker by Dr. Yolanda Jones. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Yolanda Jones, the Executive Director of Student Success Services here at Jarvis Christian College. I have served in this position since July 1st, and I already feel like I'm at home here in East Texas. Family is so important to me, and in fact, today I'm going to introduce to you someone that is special to me and someone that I consider family. It gives me great pleasure to introduce someone that is a friend to me, a mentor to me, a big brother to me, and one of the greatest role models anyone can have, Mr. Willie Hayes Gregory Sr. Before he comes up, I'll be very brief and very selective as to what I want to share with you with some of his accomplishments during his tenure. He currently serves as the Director of Global Community Investments for Nike Incorporation. He has served his birthplace, the city of Memphis, Tennessee, for two decades, using his 30 years of experience working in Nike, sports, sports marketing, 
business investments, government and community relations. Mr. Gregory is currently the board, is currently the chairman of the board of the Greater Memphis Chamber of Commerce. He has received a plethora of awards, and I will be up here all night, so I narrowed it down. But he has received a plethora of awards for his community service, including Nike's African American Network Person of the Year, to name a few. I like that award. I was very excited and happy for him as an African American mentor of mine. He is also a recipient of the Ralph Hatley University of Mississippi, uh, University of Memphis Hall of Fame Athletic Award. He is a Mississippi Valley State University and the University of Memphis alumnus. And he is also recognized in the Hall of Fame in Memphis City Schools. But more importantly, I would like to share with you what kind of man he is. He is the greatest father to Willie Jr and Benjamin Gregory, and the flyest granddaddy to four-year-old Trey. <laughs> Trey has his heart. He is that big brother. He is that favorite cool uncle. He is that favorite nephew. He is that best friend everyone wants to spend time with. And he is also known, and we call him Double D, and Double D is direct and dependable. Not only is he a family man, he has mentored and helped so many young people throughout their career, including myself when I was a youngster. He is a philanthropist, a humanitarian, a community activist, and a very active church member. Kind, fun, honest, intelligent, straightforward, and an exemplary example of diversity in corporate America are just a few adjectives that I would like to use to describe him. But I can confirm he has always been humble. He has always been such a gentleman, gentleman at all times, even when he fussed. I called Mr. Gregory when I decided to come to Jarvis, and he was so supportive. And it is obvious because he has shown up within three months to continue to su support me and, of course, support our friend, longtime friend, Dr. Lester C. Newman. Therefore, I would like everyone in the house to put your hands together and welcome Mr. Willie Hayes Gregory Sr. to Jarvis Christian College. Thank you. Thank you, Bonk. <laughs> That's how I know her as Bonk. And she's right. There have been times that I have really, really had to, what they call, tighten it up on her. Um, but look at her now. Thank you so much, Bonk. I appreciate it. It's amazing what you do when you pay for dinner at night. <laughs> Again, I <clears throat> want to thank you for allowing me here. Uh, President Newman and his lovely wife, uh, who I know she runs things. Y'all think uh, Doc runs stuff, but she runs it. She's been, she's been running it for a while. <laughs> for inviting me to share in your, out, in your celebration of, of the outstanding athletes, the coaches, teams, the administrators, um, and just thank you for allowing me to be part of this 110th anniversary by honoring individuals in your Hall of Fame celebration. But before I go there, I want a, uh, a couple of house cleaning chores. Yesterday, I was picked up from the airport uh, by two young ladies, Tamia and Champagne. I think they work for Will. Uh, and they were my drivers. And I just want to say, through that traffic, they navigated it very well. <laughs> <laughs> and that traffic was hellacious yesterday. Uh, also, my compliments to the chef. Uh, this food is outstanding. Uh, it is great. And my compliments to Dr. Newman. I heard that it's been 20 years since you've had this celebration. And Doc, thank you for bringing it back. Now, you as an audience, there's one thing that I'd love for you to do for me. Uh, just in place, would you stand up, please? Everybody here, would you just stand for a minute? Now, would you move to the right one step? 
and would you move back to the left one step? Now you may have a seat. So if anybody asks you, the speaker did move you. Okay. <clears throat> Today, I stole that from a 20-year-old grad student at, at Philander Smith, so it's, so it's not original. I, I stole I heard somebody say, I got to use that. I, I stole it from somebody else. I think the best idea is a stolen idea. Uh, today, I want my remarks to focus on the key words for this event, and that is fame, uh, F-A-M-E. It's a word that defines many of us by our goals and dreams and our accomplishments. But today, I'm not going to make attaining fame easy for you honorees at the tables that you're at. In fact, I'm going to require and strongly recommend that you dig deep into the core of your beliefs to see if you are really ready for this mysterious word that we call fame. I say it's mysterious because in today's world of social media and reality television, we have a lot of folks who are famous. You know, somebody says, well, I got two million followers. But that's just for being famous. And I'm sure President Newman, the administrators, and even your families did not invest years into your future to make sure you had more followers on Facebook, Instagram, likes on Twitter, Twitter, Instagram, and cute, funny, viral videos on this now controversial thing called TikTok. That kind of fame is fleeting. That kind of fame is easily replaced and oftentimes leads to embarrassing revelations about someone's character and history on this thing that we call social media. I know we're not in class, okay, but we're at a luncheon, but today I'm going to school you on the real components of fame, not just as an executive that has worked at Nike for a while, but as a father, a member of my community, and hopefully, by the end of my remarks, I'll still be your friend. Let me share with you the story about four fathers, four dads that was arguing. And each dad claimed to have the best son in the world, as we all do. You know, we've got sons, we want to say, hey, we got the best son in the world. The first dad says, my son is the best because he is so rich. I only gave him a small loan of a million dollars, and he ended up making four billion from his multi-billion dollar hotel business. He is so successful that he was elected to lead a country. Not only is he so rich and powerful, but he also donates a lot of that money to charity. Once, he bought a private jet to give to one of his friends as a birthday gift. And you know, I wish I was that friend. Uh, He's so rich that a private jet was like nothing to him because he had billions of dollars in net worth. Now the second dad says, my son is the best because he is so famous. Being a multimillionaire, everyone wants to suck up to him and many companies want, to, want him to sponsor their business. He is a YouTube star and is also an actor for a Disney Channel show. He bought his friend a Rolex watch as a birthday gift, and the Rolex felt like nothing to him because he is so rich. The third dad says, your son is pathetic. My son is the best because he owns a huge music corporation that makes millions of dollars. He is capable of legally manipulating the government to cater for him. He runs a YouTube channel business where singers can pay to upload their songs and their music to his YouTube channel. He is capable of altering the government system. He is so rich and successful that he bought a mansion for a friend as a birthday gift, and he still had millions of dollars left. Now, the fourth dad says, well, my son was only able to attend a community college. He is very poor and makes minimum wages working at a fast food restaurant. 
The other dads started laughing and they said, pity your son, pity you and your son. Then the fourth dad says, well, my son spent years saving up money to throw a birthday party. He invited only a few people and they attended his party, but he got some great birthday gifts. He got a mansion, he got a Rolex, and a private jet from some of his friends that attended. <laughs> so now, what are you trying to say here, Willie? What's the moral of this story? It says that fame can bring wealth and even success, but if being wealthy and famous can only provide the material things in life, what about just being honest, hardworking, kind, and true to yourself? Sometimes that's enough to gain material things without being a cheater, ruthless, and prideful. So join me as I define fame, F-A-M-E, as we search within to see what it truly takes to reach our goals the right way. And I promise you I won't be long. Starting with the letter F, faith. Faith is what sustains you when you face dark days, setbacks, and people telling you that you're not good enough, Bob. Faith is that nagging voice telling you you are more than enough. Stay the course, don't give up. Faith comes with memories. Faith comes with history. Faith comes with knowing your story is going to have a happy ending. Faith has a cheering squad made up of your parents, your siblings, your teammates, your teachers, and your community. Faith can drive out the sound of the negative and replace it with a sense of calm and peace. Faith can drive out those haters. Faith is the work you continue to do when others tell you it's worthless and to give up. Faith is what you pray for instead of a new car or house because faith will lead you to acquire those things in the right way. Faith is what you must lean on. Let's look at the letter A, attitude. A lot of coaches would tell you, you may not have a lot of talent, but you've got a good attitude so I can coach you. In the world of sports, we all have seen the fastest, the strongest, the tallest, the smartest, the goats, the greatest of all times. The one thing that can stop your success is having a bad attitude. Because nobody wants to be around you when you have a bad attitude. A bad attitude is when you start to believe your own press. You are too busy and too successful to acknowledge and you didn't get where you are without the sweat, tears, and prayers of a lot of folks who came before you. And I always tell this story is that if you see a turtle on a fence, you know that that turtle did not get there by itself. Is that somebody had to help that turtle to get to the top of that fence. And that's what we call by attitude. I can best sum it up by reminding you or NBA player Kevin Durant's words when accepting his MVP award. And I was there, and as a friend of mine I always say, it, it brought tears to a glass eye. He told the audience the real MVP was his mother for her sacrifice to make it possible for him to attain his goal. He was a turtle that was sitting on the fence. Attitude can be witnessed by the simple things your parents taught you as a child which has become uncommon. Now say thank you. Say please. When you enter the room, say hello. Nobody is expecting, you shouldn't expect them to speak to you. You came into the room. Say hello. Be humble. And take time to enjoy the simple things in life. Share. Nothing is worth having unless you have someone to share it with. Your good luck and always remember that no matter how good you are, you can always learn something new. Embrace that and seek knowledge. It will teach you so much about what you don't know. And as my grandfather used to say, all that you do know you can put on the head of a needle and it won't take up half of it. <laughs> and I've never forgotten that. So we're going to move to the letter M. A key component is mastery. 
The short definition is know your craft. Study your craft. Whenever someone thinks of your profession, no matter what it is, they should think of you as being the best at what you're doing. Dr. King famously said, if a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should sweep streets like, Manja, uh, like Michelangelo painted or Beethoven composed music or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause and say, he lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. I ask you to think about someone you admire, not just an athlete, but someone who you think is really one of the best at his or her job. Then ask yourself, how do you think they reached that level? When I was coaching, I used to coach high school, and I would have all of my players to bring a picture of someone that they dearly loved and respected, and that it helped them in their journey along the way. And I asked them to post that picture in their locker. So every day that they came from practice and they opened that locker from practice or a game, they would have to look at that person and ask themselves, did I give my best today? Because they've got to be true to the person that they care about. Because they may not care about me as a coach, but they've got to care about that person whose picture they have. I ask you to think about someone you admire. And of course, there are some people who are blessed with a natural ability to do some things, and they realize that. But the smart ones always recognize to stay at the top of their game, and they must always know what is the next step to being even better. How do you achieve that mastery? Uh, by working at Nike, I've had an opportunity to meet some of the world's greatest athletes. And I can always say that uh, Michael Jordan was good. But people don't know the amount of time that he put into the gym to master his craft, the amount of time that he put in the weight room to master his craft. I think the Detroit Pistons kind of sent him to the weight room after they got through beating up on him. Um, but you have to establish well-defined and specific goals in order to achieve this mastery. So you want to play in the NFL. That's good. But be more specific. Which team, which coach, and why you want to play there? Study the team, study the coach's philosophy, and what he or she needs for a winning team, and how you can be a part of that. And start working towards your goal by being prepared to demonstrate why the team needs you. So you want to coach tennis, or be in the WNBA, or be a college or high school coach, same formula. You should write down the kinds of questions a university athletic program, a high school administrator will ask you during an interview and be ready to answer. Break down your tasks into parts and make a practice plan. This is where the sweat starts. Uh, when Dr. Newman invited me here, I had to get ready to come here to speak because I didn't want to waste your time. Uh, I like a young basketball player named Alan Abison. But sometimes he always says, practice, you mean practice. But sometimes practice is the main part of success. A practice plan teaches us about our strengths and our weaknesses and allows us to develop a plan of action to get stronger while eliminating that weakness. That's what practice is all about. And you not only have to practice in sports, you have to practice in life. You have to practice being kind and humble to people. And then it will become a way of life. Give each part your full attention. Everything is normally connected. You can't do well on a test if you don't study. And if you study too much and not get enough sleep, you won't do well, manage the process. Me personally, Dr. Newman, I couldn't study for two weeks. I had to cram <laughs> the night before. <laughs> and so if I, that's the reason I liked early morning classes, because I couldn't retain it, but I had it right then. But I knew that that was part of my process. Get feedback from a master. Get feedback from a Dr. Newman, a Dr. Jones. This is critical. If you study your craft, you will discover who the masters are. They didn't get to be doctors and be up on that fence by themselves. Have them to share their journey with you. Today, it's very easy to research their advice and their formula for becoming a master at their craft. And I want to emphasize the word master and not role model. A role model is someone you admire but cannot talk to. 
and I know this, the master is someone you should have a personal contact with or someone can help you connect with that person. A role model might be a master to those in his or her own environment and does not want to expand that environment. I've seen a number of superstars that have bodyguards and managers and agents. Uh, Mike Williams, you've seen them. Uh, these are extra layers to protect them from being overwhelmed by fans. It will be difficult for anyone to get through to these superstars. But somewhere along their road to success, someone influenced them, a teacher, a company, a boss, a community leader, or an organization. The chances are better in researching these opportunities to assist you in getting feedback. Get out of your comfort zone. You cannot elevate to a higher level by doing the same thing the same way and getting the same results. Did you know several years ago some college football coaches <laughs> required their running backs and receivers to take dance classes? Why do you think that happened? Even the players complaining and feeling totally out of their comfort zone took them completely out. Well, if you study a dancer, you will see why they know how to control their bodies, especially their footwork. Now watch the replays the next time you look at a football game and see how a receiver walks the sidelines on tiptoes and can, and can still haul the ball in with just inches to spare from being out of bounds. And they point their toes and drag them into the end zone. Staying in your comfort zone is only hurting your chances of greatness. Venture out, learn more about opportunities that can complement your talents. Maintain your motivation. So you've done steps one through five and things are still not where you want them to be. This is where motivation comes in. You have to become your own cheerleader. This is not about bragging, it's about self-awareness and even self-care. Do not let the situation depress you or make you give up. Sometimes a delay is only a detour. Taking you another route of travel, it may take longer. Like for yesterday, the traffic was horrendous, but the young ladies knew a detour and they took another route. But there's a reason that you need to travel that road. Someone on that detour needs to be motivated by you. Someone considers you the master. Now, in your community service, volunteer with a, with a youth group. Watch them grow under your direction and leadership. They motivate you as much as you are motivating them because young people are our future. They're the ones that are going to be making decisions on what happens with us farther down the road. And I certainly want to have something to do with how they're raised. Now we're at the last letter of fame, the letter E. E is for empathy. Empathy is the ability to emotionally understand what other people feel. Let me say that one again. Empathy is the ability to emotionally understand what other people feel, see things from their point of view, imagine yourself in their place, have an out-of-body experience. Essentially, it is putting yourself in someone else's position and feeling what they must be feeling. In other words, it's not all the time about you. By a show of hands, let me see how many in the audience are older brothers and sisters in the family. Thank you. You remember when you wanted to play ball or go to the movies with your friends? <laughs> what did your mother tell you? Yeah? Take your little brother or sister with you. Yeah, take the baby with you. Had to take the baby with you. That rings truer than ever today. Take your brothers and sisters with you. Understand where they are in their lives. What brings them joy or what makes them sad or scares them? Offer a shoulder, a hand, a phone call, an experience to take them away from their situation. Just like in my story about the four sons, what was no big deal to them meant everything to a poor friend. So it was something about the poor friend that made the rich friends eagerly bless him with those gifts. Maybe it was his faith. Maybe it was his attitude, his ability to master his goals or his empathy. 
It is no accident or coincidence that 110 years later, you are sitting here living the dream put forth by the founders of Jarvis Christian College. It is no accident or coincidence that for you and this place and time, the world has turned attention to the contributions made by our historical black colleges and universities. It's in vogue now to be associated with a HBCU. And we'd better take advantage of it because that window will close, trust me. The world wants to know what makes us so special. I am a proud alumni of Mississippi Valley State University and feel just as comfortable in the boardroom with Michael Jordan as I do on the golf course with him, although I won't bet him. <laughs> the Valley gave me that sense of confidence, nurturing spirit, and a sense of family that travels with me wherever I go. Yes, we are competitive in the world of sports, but in the largest scheme of the world, HBCUs are family. When one succeeds, we all succeed. I've got friends that go to the PWIs, what I call the Privileged White Institutes. And I'll ask them, uh, when is the last time you've been back to homecoming? And they get this blank look, because they haven't. Homecoming is part of our vacation. <laughs> Everybody comes back to homecoming from HBCUs. It is no coincidence or accident that former professional athletes now are looking to join our family as head coaches. They respect the magic of HBCUs. Eddie George at Tennessee State University, Dion at Jackson State University. Uh, we've got a number of uh, Kenny Anderson at Fish University in Nashville. It's in vogue now to be associated with a HBCU finally. And you tell me God ain't good? As you review and research how you want to approach your personal journey moving ahead, I ask that you do so by making sure to leave a contribution to the legacy of this stellar institution. We don't do enough of that. Oh, we all go out and buy the nice clothes, the big cars, the big houses. But if every HBCU grad would donate $100 a month, think of what we could do. We would not have to see our kids at the number one Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, LSU. Doug Williams, James Harris, Parnell Dickerson, Mel Blunt, all of those guys came from HBCUs, and they contributed to championships. And now, it's not vogue to go to a HBCU. I want to go to Alabama. I remember I was at the Alabama um, LSU championship game a few years back in New Orleans. And I asked this kid, we were staying in the same hotel that uh, the LSU players were staying in. And I asked this one kid, I said, son, I said, uh, why don't you go to H? No, I, no, I says, um, what position are you on the depth chart? He said, Mr. Gregor, I'm, I'm the number three cornerback. I said, you're number three, huh? He said, yeah. I said, well, let me ask you this. Why didn't you go to a HBCU where you could have started at? The kid asked me, he said, Mr. Gregor, what's an HBCU? <laughs> We've got to do a better job of telling our story because we have a heck of a story to tell. Doug Williams and, and, and uh, James Harris, Shaq Harris, they've started the uh, Historically Black College and University Hall of Fame. We've got to do a better job of telling our story because we do have a great story to tell. And I just want you to give from the heart and give knowing that your funds will actually seed the dreams of those coming after you. Had it not been for HBCU, I probably would never have went to college because I wasn't smart enough to get into PWIs. But they took me. In closing, I'd like to borrow from Kevin Durant's playbook. A lot of people prayed, hoped, and laid the foundation that allowed you to sit here today. 
Some of these people are in this room with us now. They could be family, friends, administrators, or donors. But to my students, find those who are the real MVPs in your life. Lock eyes with them, even if it's across the room. Just look at them and say, you are the real MVP, and I thank you. If they could not be here today, call them after this luncheon and tell them, and you will not regret it. President Newman, Mrs. Newman, faculty, staff, again, thank you for asking me to bring a few words of encouragement to not only your Hall of Fame honorees, but to the entire family at Jarvis today. You, sir, are the real MVP. Thank you. Mr. Gregory, thank you. Uh, may we give him one more round of applause. Thank you. The Jarvis Christian College Athletic Hall of Fame was reinstated to recognize athletes, coaches, administrators, and those who have made outstanding contributions to the athletic programs here at Jarvis Christian College. This year, we will be honoring 10 outstanding athletes and coaches from various sports. Mr. Hampton. This time we will call up Dr. Newman to help us present the rewards. <clears throat> Mr. Gregory, will you come forward? Now, when we talked about doing this again, and I do want to say that it's been long overdue, and um, we're going to make certain that we continue to do this and to honor those who have come through Jarvis Christian College who have made a contribution. Not only were they great on the field, on the court, but they've been great people in life and I think you're deserving of honor. And when we thought about doing this, uh, the first person that came to mind was Mr. Gregory. I guess we've known each other for, what, 20 years or so? Yeah. And we've been friends. But we're not the type of friends that you talk every day. You know, you know your true friend when you can call them and they will come. And you don't have to, you know, beg and plead. And they say yes. That's the type of friend Mr. Gregory is. And we want to thank you for your your speech, it was quite a lesson, don't you think? Yes. You know, something to live by. When I think about fame, now I'm gonna think about it in a different way. <laughs> so thank you so much. But I wanna present this plaque to you uh, just as a token of our appreciation for not only being here today and, and the comments that you've made, but also being a true friend, not only a personal friend, but he's promised to be a friend of Jarvis Christian College as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Doc, and I certainly do appreciate this. And I've got to run out. I've got a flight to catch, and I've got to get back to Dallas. So you guys know how this traffic is about this time. So it's not that I don't want to stay. I'm just trying to beat the traffic. But again, thank you for having me. And any time that you need me, Doc, please don't hesitate to call me. Thank you. Okay. Our first recipient is Mr. Clay Bailey, the son of Sheila and Charles Timmons. While attending Jarvis Christian College, he became a member of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity and a member of the first inaugural Jarvis Christian College soccer team under the leadership of coach Robert Thomas. 
Mr. Bailey scored the first goal under his tutelage. He was also a member of the Humder All-Star Challenge, Presidential Scholar, and he graduated in 1999 with a 3.79 GPA while majoring in computer informational systems while minoring in mathematics. Upon graduation, uh, he moved to Houston where he worked for NASA, and then he worked in the oil and gas industry for seven years, and Mr. Va Bailey ventured out into the world of entrepreneurship and started Clay Kaiser Photography. Mr. Bailey, would you come forward, please, sir? He is also a member of the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Mr. Bailey is receiving the award for soccer. Our next recipient is Mr. Kenneth Ray Bickham, Sr. He attended Jarvis Christian College, earning a Bachelor of Science degree in education in the fields of special education and physical education. He was a member of the basketball team from 1981 to 83. He's a proud teacher, uh, not only dedicated to educational growth, but social development of young students. Mr. Bickham is married to Tanya Ryder Bickham, and they have one son, Kenneth Bickham Jr. They reside in Tyler, Texas, and members of College Hill Baptist Church, where he serves as a deacon, Sunday school teacher, and leader in the Brotherhood Ministry. He has won several awards as a coach, and I'm not going to go through all that, so y'all can read them. Our next recipient is Mr. James Branch Sr., who hails from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and now resides in Fort Worth, Texas. He is a graduate of Jarvis Christian College where he received a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in biology and minor in health and physical education. He also received a Master of Science in teaching degree from Texas Southern University and an administrative certification in, from Perryview A&M University. Uh, Mr. Branch is receiving our degree today in football. Mr. Branch and his beloved wife, Elizabeth Grady Branch, who is also a Jarvis graduate, are the proud parents of three children. Dr. James Branch, Jr., who is also a graduate of Jarvis Christian College, Marcus and Bethany, and they have five grandchildren. <laughs> For baseball, the late Nathan Chapman. Accepting his award will be his wife, Miss Vanetta Chapman. Mr. Chapman was born October 3rd, 1953 to Nathan Sr. and Costella uh, Moore Chapman. As a young child, his mother taught Mr. Chapman and his siblings how to play sports. His love for baseball grew as he, completed against the, as he competed against the children in the neighborhood and beyond. He entered Jarvis in 1971 and began baseball under Coach Anthony Robinson. His talents for hitting and stealing bases were on full display, and as a player, he received various awards for his contribution to the Full Dog team. And eventually, he was noticed by the New York Yankees and drafted in the third round. And he retired from baseball in 1982, and to this day, Mr. Chapman is still considered a hometown hero. Thank you so much. Dr. Howard Hawkins, who is not here today, and I will accept his award in his absence, but Dr. Hawkins was born and reared in Mount Pleasant, Texas. He enrolled in Jarvis in 1962. I mean, I'm sorry, he graduated from Jarvis in 1962. He played football here also. He only weighed 150 pounds, and he played uh, as a halfback here. He has served in the Texas public school system, and he retired in 1996 and accepted a position as a public administration uh, and administration at Jarvis Christian College. He's also a member of Mount Olive Baptist Church, and he's the parents of two sons, Daryl and Derek, and they have a grand, three granddaughters. This is for Dr. Howard Hawkins for football. He's not here. I'll take his award and get it to him. Thank you. <laughs> For tennis, we have Ms. Joyce Henry Mims Holt, who is a native of Hawkins, Texas since birth. At an early age, her parents instilled in her a quality of life representative of integrity, character, truth, and love for others. 
She is the youngest of seven siblings, five of whom, whom attended Jarvis and one who attended. She graduated from Fout Hawkins High School in Jarvis and graduated in 1966. She and her sister Mary Ann became a winning uh, tennis team duo and enjoyed representing Jarvis with enthusiasm, pride, and striving to do their best. Ms. Holt has taught in the field of education for over 55 years and taught at her alma mater, Jarvis, for 15 years. She is an avid believer in God's word. She's a member of the First Christian Church Disciples of Christ Hawkins, Texas, where our pastor is Billy Gibson Sr., and she has served on local, state, and national levels of Disciples General Church. Ms. Holt gives her gifts of untiring services to her home church, charitable organizations, and Christian ministries. I present to you Ms. Joyce Mims Holt. <laughs> For track and field, Mr. Kevin Paul Johnson, the son of Jesse Newton and the late, I'm, not sorry, I'm sorry, the son of the late Jesse Newton and Joan Carol Johnson Newton. He attended Ranger College where he played football until he was hit with several injuries and then he decided to come to Jarvis Christian College in the spring of 1988. While attending Jarvis, he partic participated in volleyball and ran track. He also became a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Phi Beta Chapter in 1989. He majored in mathematics and minored in physical education. And on May 5th, 1991, Mother's Day, he gave his mother something she could not get herself, a college degree by graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics. I present to you Mr. Kevin Paul Johnson. For women's softball, Ms. Valeria James Palmer. Ms. Valeria Palmer is the daughter of Louise Clark and a 1983 graduate of Mineola High School. In the fall of 1983, she landed on the campus of Jarvis Christian College under the advice and mentorship of Dr. Charles and Libby T. Jackson, Mrs. Libby T. Jackson. While at Jarvis, she excelled not only in academics, but in athletics as well, participating in volleyball, basketball, softball. This woman right here was bad, I'm telling y'all. She received the National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, Academic All-American Honors, and it goes on and on. She graduated from Java summa cum laude with a 4.0 GPA with a Bachelor of Business Administration, and then she went on to the University of Texas at Tyler and got her MBA. She is now a certified internal auditor, and she's been at that job for over 23 years. She's an active member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority as a Diamond Life member. She is a member of New Life Baptist Fellowship Church, where she serves as a financial secretary, usher, and Sunday school teacher. And she is married to Eddie Palmer, and they have one son named Brandon, who attends Perry View. Congratulations, Valeria. <laughs> oh. That's my roommate. I know. <laughs> For volleyball, we have Michelle L. Stimson. Ms. Stimson is a best-selling author and a speaker and an educator who received her Bachelor of Science degree from Jarvis Christian College in 1994. She earned a Master's in Curriculum and Instruction from the University of Texas in Arlington in 2002. She has had the pleasure of teaching elementary, middle, and high school as well as training adults. She is also uh, ministers through her writing and public speaking. Her works include the highly acclaimed Boaz Brown, Divas of Damascus Road, Falling into Grace, and the award-winning Mama Bee series. Ms. Simpson is married, and she has a daughter, and they're the proud parents. I'm um, two adults, I'm sorry, and an amazing, sweet granddaughter. Okay, thank you. The late coach Robert Thomas. Reverend Felix Earl Thomas. His award be, will be accepted by his son, Andre. He was born February 4, 1939 to Elsa and Guy Thomas in Carthage, Texas. Inspired by his faith at an early age, we all know him as Coach T, began studying to show himself a workman that needed not be ashamed. He was eventually ordained by Cumberland Presbyterian Church where he held several positions in that church. And Reverend Thomas served in the United States Army. He received a Bachelor of Science degree from Texas College and a Master's degree from East Texas State University in Commerce. And Reverend Thomas was committed to education in East Texas. He was a professor and athletic coach for over 35 years here at Jarvis Christian College, where he coached baseball, basketball, soccer, track and field, and golf. 
Reverend Thomas, who is affectionately known again as Coach T, is the father of two sons, Timothy Lewis and Andre Thomas, and he has one grandson, Nicholas Lewis. Thank you. And our last award goes to Ms. Jacqueline Jones Walker for women's basketball. She is a 1986 graduate of Jarvis Christian College with a bachelor's, bachelor's degree in biology. And while at Jarvis, she was a member of the all-conference women's basketball team in 1995 to 1986 and captain of the women's basketball team in 1986. She's currently employed with L. Lara Caring for over six years. And she is married to a fellow alumnus, Victor Walker, a class of 1986 for 34 years. And they're the proud parents of two adult children and they have seven grandchildren, and one is in the oven, as she said. And her motto, she came? She came oh, she came early, okay. <laughs> and her motto is make decisions in life that will benefit you in the long run, keeping God's love in the forefront. Congratulations, Ms. Jacqueline Walker. <laughs> and at this time, we will have closing remarks by Dr. Newman. Let's give all of our honorees another round of applause. I want to thank you for coming out in support of this activity. As I said earlier, this was long overdue, and we're going to continue to honor those who have done great things in the name of Jarvis Christian College. And I want you to know that all of the funds that we raise from this event will go to support our athletic programs. So we want to continue to support our programs. We have some great young people who are doing some great things. Uh, just this past spring, our female track team won the conference championship, but we have no track. We need to build a track for our young people. We can't do it with what we get in, in, in tuition and fees. We need your help. Our young men came in second in the conference. We have great baseball, softball, volleyball is playing today. If you have time, go out, go downstairs and see our volleyball team. We have great young people here at Jarvis Christian College representing us. We need you to ensure that they have all that they need to have to be competitive. And we're going to continue to do this to support our students. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being part of this. Uh, when we said we were going to do this, we didn't know whether or not we're going to get people out, but look around. This is a great audience. You deserve a round of applause. And I'm going to ask uh, members of the committee to stand. Ms. Walker, please stand. Uh, this is it. They're the persons who went through the names and, and made the decision, you know, I was just the vehicle to get, get this started. So we're going to continue, as I've said, to do this. And, and, you know, there may be persons back in the days that we don't have records of. You know, some records have gotten destroyed. So help us to be able to go through this process and make certain that we're honoring the people who deserve to be honored. So if you have information, please send it to the committee, send it to uh, Mr. Hampton so we can make certain that we're doing what we need to do and do our due diligence to ensure that persons who have represented Jarvis Christian College and done a fantastic job in doing that receive honor. So again, thank you for coming out today. This week is Jarvis Fest. We have a few activities going on. I want to invite you to do that. As I've said, it would be great even if you don't stay, if you go downstairs so our young people, our young ladies can see you. It would be great uh, uh, to do that. And I think this, this evening we have, uh, is it a basketball game? Uh, I think our, uh, some of our alums are playing our, uh, our young folks. Now, please don't get hurt. <laughs> you know, if you know you got a you know, bad back, <laughs> you know, bad knee, stay off the court. <laughs> but please come out and enjoy. Again, thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you next year about the same time. Thank you so much. Right. Can we get a picture of all of the honorees up front? All of the honorees and those who, who received the, the awards for others, will you, will you please come up front? And members of the committee as well.
All members of the committee. I think so. Good seeing you, Juan. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Do not leave. After the photo session, we will have a benediction and the singing of the alma mater. Dinkins. everybody's attention please we're almost about to could I have everyone's attention for just a moment please all right could we all just uh, stand as we sing together our alma mater and then we're going to pronounce the benediction we'll have our tea to pull the pull the music down
right, y'all sing with me. JCC, we love you can be none but great as we God bless be an idol of our gold and which we wear you have word truth we share to and here and there, JCC marches. <clears throat> Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for this experience. <clears throat> thank you for each person that has been honored and the gifts that they have displayed. As we now prepare to go down from this place, I now pray the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you God's peace in your labor, your leisure, your laughter, your tears, your joys, as well as in your sorrows. May the love of God go with you every step of your journey. Amen. <laughs>